Welcome to Murfreesboro Storyteller. Our program today is originating from the Jeff Hendricks Stadium Club, atop Horace Jones Field on the campus of Middle Tennessee State University. And we're happy to have as our guest, first of all, Chris Massaro, Director of Athletics at MTSU. Chris, welcome. Thanks, John. It's a pleasure to be here. And Diane Turnham, who is Associate Director of Athletics for MTSU. Diane, welcome to you. Thanks. Great to be here. Chris, as I recall, you came to MTSU in 2005 from South Carolina. What things have happened since you came here? Well, it's been fun, John. It really has. And, and we've got a good team that we've built here at, at MTSU. And, and so we've done a lot, but there's still a lot to do. So we don't get bored. Plenty on your plate, I'm sure. Yeah. Diane, you've been in the athletics department for how many years? Over 30. Over 30. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's, uh, I came uh, back in 1983. Uh, worked with our women's basketball team and coached volleyball for a while and uh, kind of grew into my career here and uh, had lots of wonderful opportunities working with some of our different athletic directors and moved into administration and love it. Obviously, as AD, Chris is responsible for the whole operation. Certainly. What is your area of responsibility? Well, uh, Chris has several associate athletic directors right. and basically we all have a different area. Uh, mine, I handle most all of our personnel changes and then work with him overseeing our women's sports. Okay. Chris, I've heard you say to groups that the athletics department is the front porch for MTSU. Right. T tell us what you mean by that. Well, in some ways, it's a visitor center, too, John, that, that uh, we may not be the most important piece of the university, but I think a lot of people draw their impressions off of what we do. Uh, sometimes they don't visit the heart of campus or, or step inside of academic centers, but they do come inside the Murphy Center. They do come inside Floyd Stadium. And uh, so we make impressions on people. We're on television all the time. We're in the newspaper every day. And so what we do, we view as very important because we can help get the word out on what a wonderful mission and, and how MTSU is growing and what a vibrant community we really have here. What a jewel you have in this Jeff Hendricks Stadium Club. Yeah, this is great. You know, and, and it, uh, Jeff was a very great donor of ours. Uh, we miss him dearly. He passed away three, four years ago, and, and it, uh, this is just a, a tremendous legacy to who he is. That uh, It's a beautiful place for our fans to come congregate before a game, talk about anything in the world. We've got all kinds of televisions in here, so you can talk about any game that's being played on a Saturday afternoon. So we invite people to come in and, and enjoy this thing and, and enjoy college football. We're lucky to have it in Murphy Center, and and we're lucky that Jeff was such a key part of our athletic department and left this as a legacy for us. Yeah, it's a jewel, it really is. Athletics has certainly grown and progressed during your administration here. Uh, m many of the sports have, have uh, brought home championships. Tell us about some of the athletic successes. Well, we do take pride in, in having an excellent athletics program. And, and it, uh, one of the things that we took a great deal of pride in, Diane, right, is the, is the Boobas Cup and yes. what we would win Tell us in what the, the Sun Cup Cup Cup. That was the best all-around, it measured the best all-around performance all right. within the Sun Belt Conference. And we won it like the last five years that we were in the Sun Belt Conference. To me, that signified that, that we were an excellent in a lot of different mm -hmm. areas. And that's mm -hmm. one of the, our mantras. We try to be excellent in everything we do. And, we want to be excellent in academics. We want to be excellent socially. We want to be excellent, uh, you know, and, and compete and win championships as well. So, you know, and, and when we look at kind of some of our programs, John, we've been really fortunate to be here that, uh, you know, I was lucky and Diane and other people built it before I got here, a tremendous baseball program. Women's mm -hmm. basketball has historically been, been uh, terrific here and, and you can't talk about our athletics programs without talking about Dean Hayes and what he's accomplished oh, yeah. over his career in track I mean so we've got some real jewels that are right here in Murfreesboro and I think we've got the best coaching staff in the country without a doubt certainly have. I would agree Dean Hayes certainly is a uh, almost a <laughs> MTSU Blue Raider tradition I guess he is he, he is, is. What, what a great asset he has been he's been here we were talking earlier that he's been here approximately half of, of our institution's history yeah. yeah which is amazing and, and he's operated at a high level the whole time and, and so one of our big thrills was when we were able to, to name the 
the track and soccer stadium after him. And he's the guy that got spring fling kind of going, that it was his idea to Ronnie Carter. And, and so you can just go on and list Dean's accomplishments, all the Olympians he's had and all mm. the NCAA champions he's had. It's been a remarkable career, so to be able to name the, the track and soccer stadium after him was a great thrill for the university. Hey, you mentioned Spring Fling, of course, that was with the TWSAA, and it's brought a lot of folks into the community on the campus as yeah. well. And almost what we were talking about earlier, that we are the visitor center, and that's a really important element for us that, to me, the more high school kids we can bring mm -hmm. to campus, the better chance we have to enroll them as students. You know, and, and we can talk about the athletics piece of it, but really, when you have the band members and little brothers and sisters and everybody coming, and it's a family event in our, in our championship events with the TSSAA, so that helps us as a university and, and exposes some of the best things we have to offer at Middle Tennessee. Are you going to continue the basketball uh, event during the season or you bring in the city school children? Yes, we've event. already got that planned again this year. We are working with uh, Dr. Linda Gilbert and Lisa Trail, and that will be the December 3rd game against Clemson University. Uh, it'll be an 11 o'clock game, and it'll be rocking. <laughs> I understand the noise level is tremendously high. Higher than I've ever heard it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a screech high. <laughs> many, Higher octave, too. <laughs> how many children do you bring in that group? Uh, they bring the first through the sixth graders, and we okay. have approximately 8,000 city school oh, students at that time. That's a wonderful program. Yeah, we try to incorporate like uh, science experiments and, and, and educational opportunities, so it's just not a field trip to come watch a basketball right. game. Oh, excellent. That we're able to expose other parts of the university as well, and also to to give them a little bit of substance as well. So mm -hmm. uh, with basketball, there's a lot of math, so they can, and some geography and all those kind of things. So we try to incorporate as much of that as we can. And the great success you've, you've enjoyed academically in, in athletics. It's not just to win the game or to win the tournament or to win the trophy, right. but it, the academics is what it's all about. Yeah, and, uh, and I've got to give Dr. McPhee a ton of credit for this. and and Terry Whiteside, who's our faculty uh, rep as well, that, that uh, Terry's got a saying that he wants people to graduate with a diploma in one hand and championship rings in oh, the other. I like that. I, I love that. I do. You know, and, and so, and that's really what, how we try to operate, mm -hmm. and we've been very successful in doing that. And I firmly believe, too, that if you care about the person as the whole, like if the student knows that we care about their after career, then they're going to give us more during their career as well. Sure. So I just think that they're able to perform at high levels because our coaches care about the total student athlete, just not the athletic piece. No doubt the success you've had in so many programs certainly helps in your recruiting. It does, and, and I, I believe in the rising tide mm -hmm. lifts all boats, you know, so the better the tennis team does helps men's basketball, Absolutely. and the better that men's basketball does helps our our baseball program and you know just go all the way down the line and and so I think winning's contagious and, and our our coaches are have friendly competitions with each other that's good nobody <laughs> wants to be the laggard you know or it's <laughs> having the tough season uh, so I, I think there's extra motivation mm -hmm. there as well mm -hmm. what about facilities you've improved facilities tremendous tremendously and there's still an effort going on yeah. to bring everything up to date there, it's an ongoing battle it, 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 just to oh, kind of keep it going uh, we're sitting in one that I'm especially proud of, the Jeff Hendricks Club that we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. That uh, in 2009 we opened up, uh, redid Reese Smith Field uh, for baseball, and, and it's it's one of the top baseball facilities in the country. We've uh, we've done the Dean Hayes Track and Soccer Stadium as well. We've we've done some things. Uh, uh, Jeff Hendricks uh, Golf Center out mm -hmm. of Champions Run. Mm -hmm. We've uh, we're, we're under construction now of an indoor tennis facility at Old Fort Park. Uh, so we've done a lot. We've done a lot of tinkering. A lot of locker rooms have been done over, mm -hmm. have yeah. been redone, and we put new turf on the football field. And John, I can't wait till basketball season when we kind of open up phase one of uh, renovations to Murphy Center as well. So, so a lot has happened. Tell us about the turf, the new turf on. Horace Jones Field, that you, you've changed the whole playing surface, haven't yeah. you? We did, and it, it was the, this summer's project, and the Savannah State game, uh, where it rained the entire four hours, 
we found out one thing, that that thing drains exceptionally well. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. and what we've done is we took out, the, it used to have a crown, mm -hmm. so right. we leveled the crown and it's completely flat. And we also have, now have turf that really extends from stadium wall to stadium mm -hmm. wall. In the past, there was a concrete blue apron that, that kind of ringed our field. And that's given us a bunch of, not only does it look better aesthetically, but it's given us so much more room so when football is out there practicing, they've got more room. The other sports are, are also using it. So it's, it's increased our multi-use of the, our football field tenfold. That's wonderful. Funding, I'm sure, is always a, a need and a necessity. There's never quite enough to do everything you'd like to do. But you do, uh, you have a lot of success in private fundraising. We do. Players. We've got some people that feel very passionate about our student athletes and, and want to invest in them. And, and I think that's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got some wonderful stories of whether it's Janice Johnson or Kiki Stewart in women's basketball where you could visibly see what a college education meant to those girls. And, and then we had Chris McClever, who the first played football here and the first bed he ever slept in was at Scarlet mm -hmm. Commons and so and he's graduated and doing well and so so I think people want to invest in those kind of stories that because you can make a difference in young people's lives uh, with, with the investment into our BRAA and and so it's really uh, it's we're really passionate about it and Diane you can Th help those with stories that too. Yeah. Yeah. tell us a little bit more about Geek. Well, you know, Coach Insel was talking about it the yeah. other day, but uh, Kiki Stewart was a young lady from Oak Ridge, Tennessee that Coach Insel recruited. Uh, she came onto our campus. She was here less than three days, uh, and she left in the middle of the night. She went to the bus station, said she was homesick. She went home. Um, in the midst of that, she uh, had a, a daughter, and she was working in a nursing home back in Oak Ridge. Mm -hmm. And about three years later, she called Coach Insel and said, um, Coach, I want to come back. And uh, Coach is like, well, you know, Kiki, you left us, and, you know, there are things you'll have sure. to do. So he gave her some things that she'd have to do. She agreed to them, but he went to Chris, and Chris said, hmm, you know, that, that's a big one. Uh, and they went to see Dr. McPhee, of course, right, and at sure. first, initially, he, he, he said, you know, I, I just think it's too long. We don't need to do it. Uh, he went back and talked to Kiki and said, we just can't do it now. So she accepted that. But she called back a little bit later. Uh, Coach Insel went back to Chris, and they went back to Dr. McPhee. And both said, okay, Coach Insel, we'll, if you feel it's that important, we'll give her a chance. But uh, it, it's all on you. Oh, and yeah. Coach Insel took that with great pride, and he brought Kiki back in. She uh, has now graduated with a degree. Her daughter uh, is about seven now. Um, but Kiki is working to get in nursing school, and she has a bright future. And she'll tell you uh, it's all a direct result of her time at MTSU. Mm -hmm. And in fact, one of the, the things that really made me proud is this year the uh, Women's Final Four was in Nashville, Tennessee. And in that game program was a story and a picture of Coach Insel and Kiki. And, and she will credit him oh, and Middle Tennessee State with changing her life. And that, that makes you feel good. That's what That makes it all worthwhile. You know, and... and there are a lot of Kiki Stewart stories there yes, out there, sure and there every many. sport has, has them. And, and that's an example of our coaches really taking uh, and nurturing some of these people that maybe don't have the best backgrounds and, right. and, and taking them under their wing and, and showing them there is another way to, to live your life and, and to offer them hope. Mm -hmm. And that's what colleges really do. And, and so when people invest in our BRAA, that's what we try to do is, you know, let's change people's lives. And we like to say, we're here to change people's limits. Mm -hmm. You know, and so many times that, 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 that people get put in a box and, and that they're limited. And so we want to remove those ceilings on them and let them grow. And, and we've been very successful with that and, and through multiple sports. And so mm -hmm. that's why I'm really pr proud to go out and, and to tell our story, John, and, and to to invite people to, to really become a part of our program mm -hmm. and to become part of Murfreesboro. And we're a big part of Murfreesboro, and Murfreesboro needs to be a big part of us because we're all tied together in this equation. And, and together, we can make so much difference in young people's lives. I'll elaborate more on that about the community-university relationship and how important they are together and what the university means to this community. Yeah, and I, I think it's really important. So when you drill it down, into an athletic sense.
there's 128 schools that play Division I ace football. Okay, so we're one of those 128. So already we're in a very select company. Mm -hmm. Now you drill that down a little bit further on a, on a football Saturday afternoon, there can only be mostly, the most number you can have is 64 games. Okay. You know, out of the 120. Yeah. So when we have a football game here on a Saturday afternoon, we're one of 64 communities across the country that host Division One A football. So it, we need people to, to take advantage of that and to come and buy tickets and help mm -hmm. celebrate. This is a great community event. Come and, and we've got a great product, so come support it. Buy a ticket, let's flex our muscles, let's show people what Murfreesboro is all about. We're on television. Uh, five of our six home games are on national television this year. And people draw their impressions from that. So let's fill up the stands. Let's show a vibrancy that's never been seen before and uh, to really lift this community. We can do it with, with the help of football and athletics. Mm -hmm. And we need the community to help us do it. We can't do it without it. And we try to be good partners back to the community, John as well. Mm -hmm. Our student athletes last year did over 3,000 hours of community wow. service. So we, we believe in that. So it's been great. We've got a great working relationship with, with Murfreesboro and the, and the city and, and those kind of things. We just, we always want more support because that's going to make a difference. We're almost at that tipping point. So I would invite everyone mm -hmm. to come buy a ticket and come watch us play. A recent football game, home football game, we had had one of the largest crowds we've had in several years. We did. did we beat Western Kentucky right. here. We dominated the whole way. We won in triple overtime, uh, basically on the last play of the game. Uh, it was a terrific game. It was. You, there's going to be all kinds of college football games played all year long. I don't know if there will be a better one than that I one that we right. saw on Saturday night. It was a well played game. Very few penalties. So there was only one turnover between the two teams. So it was a game that was played at a high level. It was, the place was energized. There was a good number of Western Kentucky fans here as well. Good crowd. So that just makes it fun. And, and mm -hmm. so uh, I think it's good. You know, it's only 64 games on a Saturday. That's about one per state, a little less or a little more than one per state. So we're really lucky to live here in Murfreesboro where we have that on six Saturdays a year. Diane, how do you spend most of your time? <laughs> well, basically, uh, working with our women's programs, okay. uh, I oversee several of them, and so obviously uh, with, with the game management aspects, uh, we try to make sure that they have everything they need to compete, uh, and so we work very closely with them. I also work, as I said, with uh, hiring uh, new personnel, okay. and it's been uh, an exciting summer and, and one that we've brought in. Uh, quality new employees. Every summer there's a little bit of a turnover. Uh, this year it was predominantly with some of our administrators mm -hmm. uh, instead of coaches. We only lost a couple of assistant coaches. So lots of uh, writing of uh, job descriptions and, and such fun, but uh, also working with our student athletes. And that's probably the greatest part of our day is, is working with them and, and helping them out in the different areas as they go to class and then come back and practice and making sure that they have the things that they need to sure. compete. You know, John, Diane's being too modest. Because <laughs> uh, there's not a decision that gets made in the athletics department that she's not involved in. Okay. You know, and so she is, uh, she's involved in everything from football, men's basketball, all the women's sports. So, That's a dismay. So everything that, that occurs in athletics particularly the good stuff. <laughs> she's, she's got a tremendous hand in it. Uh, so she's too modest on what she does all day. But it's easier to be specific than say everything because that's what she in I, essence I does imagine. is a little bit of everything. Every day's a new day with yeah. us. <laughs> yeah. Well, and in, in what you're talking about now, you've really brought in some outstanding people in the yeah. years you've been here. Yeah. I'm real proud of that, that I think that as a team, and she's very... Uh, she, she's in charge of personnel, so she's involved in every hiring that we do. And so we've, I think we've assembled a really good team. I think so. We're, we're excited about the, uh, we've talked about our coaches, but our administrative staff mm -hmm. is really great. And we had a couple of new positions this year. Uh, we elevated Courtney Gaucher. He's now associate athletic director. Uh, he's as good as there is. And I'm so excited about him. He's young. He's 25 mm -hmm. or 26 years old, mm -hmm. but 
he can he's he's really good. And what is he responsible for? He's really responsible doing? for he's got the equipment and apparel contracts. Mm. So he's in charge of all that. He's in charge of facilities. Mm -hmm. uh, he's in charge of our training room, our video room, um, our weight room. Mm -hmm. What else am I missing, Diane? Because he's got a plate full. He does. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to list them all out. Game management. Yes. Okay. Like on, on football, uh, game management is his deal. Uh, so so he's, he's really integral to everything we do. Mm -hmm. And then we also hired an associate AD for development. And he's been in town for about a month. And uh, Keith McClooney, and we hired him from Wake Forest. Mm -hmm. and, and Keith's hitting the, the ground running, doing a great job. Just uh, you can feel the energy off of mm -hmm. him. He, he's real passionate about what he does. I think he's going to be a great addition for us. I, I'm just excited to work with him every day. It's been fun. So, so I can't wait to see what he can do in and the And in future. that position, he heads the BRA. Is he's that in correct? charge of the BRAA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so. Uh, the, the total athletic giving piece of it. Mm -hmm. And then he's also hiring a position below that that will be really in charge of our annual fund and our mm -hmm. annual okay. donations. And then we probably have one more position in there to hire as well. Mm -hmm. So we've really kind of retooled what we do in terms of fundraising. And, and I'm excited about mm -hmm. We're about halfway through the retooling. And, and I, I think the results, everyone will be quite pleased. How many people do you have in the athletic department? personnel staff oh gosh uh, right now we would probably have with coaches assistant coaches mm -hmm. everyone around 125 okay so it's a it's it's a great staff I can't emphasize that enough that these are people that really love what they do and, and if so they're in it for the right reasons mm -hmm. you know and and we we hear a lot about particularly in other conferences and how much money is involved in athletics and and exorbitant salaries of some coaches and those kind of things. But I can sit here, John, and just look you in the eye and tell you with our coaches and our staff that we're all in it for the right reasons. And, and that's the, what we talked about a couple times is the, mm -hmm. the betterment of the student athlete. And we're all really passionate about mm -hmm. that and to, to make their lives better. And, and right. let's win a few games along the way, too, because yeah. we're very competitive people as well. So we've got mm -hmm. that, that passion. And so I, sure. I'm excited about our staff. I love them. What, what is the size of the athletic budget? We're about uh, between 22 and 23 million. Okay. How much of that is uh, state funding? Uh, I think about 8 million is what small, the- is Relatively the, small yeah, part from state funding. That's the appropriated piece of it. And, and what I always like to do is, that's the gross because we pay our own scholarship costs as well. Okay. So really, it's almost like an even wash because when we end up paying our tuition bill and our, our dining hall bill and stuff, it comes to seven or eight million as well. Sure. So in some ways, when you look at it from I an see. accounting point mm -hmm. of view, it, it's like an even trade. Mm -hmm. Chris, you must have a wish list. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us yeah. some of the things you, you hope to do, like to do, want to do, yeah. or in the process of doing, however they fit in. You know, and, and a lot of wish list is on facilities. Okay. You know, and, and we would like a multi-purpose indoor practice facility. So too many times during thunderstorms mm -hmm. and, and stuff that our teams can't practice uh, in January and February. Sometimes those are difficult months as well. So I, I would, that, that's probably number one in terms of some facilities. We're always looking to upgrade each of our stadiums sure. and, and what we can do. Uh, you know, and, and then the, the bigger piece of my wish list is to find a way to, to connect to even more fans and investors with what we're trying to do because we believe so passionately in what we're trying to accomplish here uh, and feel like uh, if we can communicate that message out there effectively, uh, then, then people, more people will want to become a part of us. We want to be representative of the whole region mm -hmm. and, and to be the, the choice, the entertainment choice, the, the, the athletic choice of the entire Middle Tennessee region to come right here to Murfreesboro and watch the Blue Raiders play. Do we still have many of our graduates out co coaching in the general area, oh, as we always yeah, have? Yeah, they're, they're, 
they're everywhere, and Diane probably could. That's uh, a great recruiting tool, too, isn't it, it, Diane? It is. It is. And you know, uh, obviously, Middle's been a teacher's college for so many years, and they still produce wonderful uh, educational mm -hmm. members for so many communities around us. And, and we talk about that all the time, that uh, if we can draw our alums that are probably within a two-hour radius, then we're not only are we going to feel Floyd Stadium, we're going to do lots of wonderful things. And those Very are the true. kinds of things we... We'd love to get those alums back on campus because the campus has changed. Uh, there's some wonderful programs they need to know about. But we also, our community is always growing. And, and we want to be Murfreesboro, Rutherford County, and, and the Middle Tennessee area's team. Uh, and, and we believe that when we do that, all of our facilities will be full. And that helps us with our revenue. That helps us do greater things, some of the projects that Chris are talking about. Once we increase that revenue, and we think we are a great economic value for so many families in our community, and we know oh, we have a great that. product with great student athletes who we think are great role models. So we think everyone in our city and surrounding area should be here when we play. Absolutely. <laughs> Again, emphasize the, the, the dependence on that, that you feel toward the community and how it works both ways. It is. It's a two-way two, two relationship, and, and I think it's a great learning piece for our student-athletes to do a lot of community service, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, just to, to, to get them out off the campus and realize, hey, there's a community out here where we can make a difference, whether it's reading to a child in school, whether it's working in, on a United Way project, all those kind of things. Uh, we've done some Habitat for Humanity sure. work as well and, and so it helps build team, it helps build character, it helps connect us to the community uh, that there's missions out there that are larger than what we're trying to do here at Floyd Stadium and to drive home that point I, I think that perspective is always a healthy thing and sometimes we all get lost in our own little worlds and to step out and maybe to work in a soup kitchen or whatever is it, it lends some perspective and that's healthy for everyone especially for our student athletes. Yeah, it's got to mean an awful lot for the student athletes in particular to get out there and see what the world is really like, I guess. You know, and they enjoy it, John. It, it, oh, uh, yeah. they, you know, they might be grumbling a little bit when, they're, when you try to sign them up, and, and then when they come back, come back. They're, they're like, they're buoyed. They're, 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 they're excited, and, and so and they'll, they'll, they're happy to share their stories of, you know, when they went to the school and maybe they connected to a little girl mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah. And so they're, they're happy to share those stories. That's wonderful. We're so proud of MTSU and our athletic program and proud of you and your staff and, and what you, you do for, from week to week and day to day as far as that goes. We, we, we wish you every success in the future. And I know that uh, number one item on your list might be uh, a uh, conference championship in, in each athletic each sport. Yeah, we, we, we're very competitive. We like to, we're very competitive people. So we. We do like to win. There's no better mm -hmm. feeling than being around and uh, winning programs. So uh, come see us. Come help us win those championships. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun, and, and we've got great kids that will give their all. That One thing that we may not win every game, John, but you'll see teams that really compete hard when you, when you come to our events. And that's so important. Yeah. Diane Turnham, Associate Director of Athletics, and Chris... Uh, Masaro, the Athletics Director for MTSU, thank you for being with us. Thank you for letting us be with you in the Jeff Hendricks Stadium Club. We wish you every success in the future. Hey, thank this was fun. Much. Thanks, John. Yeah. Thank you. That's uh, Murfreesboro Storytellers for uh, this particular moment.